Monotype runs are pretty underappreciated in my opinion, with most of Pokemon Challenge runs online being either Nuzlocks or solo runs. So today we're going to give them some love and attention by finishing going over the best Monotype runs for each game. In the last video, I went over Gens 1 through 5, and today we'll finish up with the rest of the main series games. Before we jump in, let me go over the ground rules. First, for a type to be considered for a particular game, you need to be able to obtain at least one Pokemon of that type before beating the first gym. This seems like a good cutoff, as it would be weird to cross a significant milestone like this before even starting the run. Second, Pokemon have their final stage considered when team planning. So for example, the water starter Froakie would count as water and dark, since that's Greninja's type. The trade-off for this is that you have to evolve the Pokemon as soon as you can. So you can't pause on evolving something like Quilladin to avoid a 4 times weakness to flying. The only other thing I have to say before we jump in, be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoy the video. Otherwise, let's get started. So at the end of part 1, I had finished talking about the Gen 5 games, black and white. In that video, I skipped over games like Emerald and Platinum in my consideration. Honestly, I don't really have a reason for skipping them and kind of wish I hadn't in hindsight. I may do it for my worst gen videos, but I didn't need to do it here. So to make up for that, we'll start this video on the Generation 5 sequels, Black 2 and White 2. While these games are largely similar, there are a couple massive changes that really shake up how you plan a monotype run. The biggest of which is the inclusion of pre-Generation 5 Pokemon before the post-game meaning there's a lot more variety for the player, especially before the first gym. We went from having 6 possible types in black and white, to 11 in the sequel games. However, ironically enough, I think the best type for these games is the same as their predecessors, being the fighting type. Again, this allows us to keep Tepig, which is incredibly helpful. I didn't really mention it in part 1, but getting to keep your starter for a run like this is really beneficial. Starters are meant to be consistently scaled across your playthrough, as, obviously, they intend you to use it the whole way through. So keeping Tepig is a blessing from Arceus itself. It's solid in the early game against the first two gyms, which is nice given that their weaknesses are hard to come by so early in the game. Tepig also does very well against the third gym leader, Berg. But Tepig isn't the only Pokémon you're relying on by this point. An amazing fighting type you can get at the start is Riolu. While a rare encounter, Riolu is incredible to get this early. It doesn't do amazing off the bat, but obtaining it early means you have time to increase its friendship, meaning you can get a Lucario in the early level 20s without much trouble. And with the resistances gained from being Steel-type, along with Lucario's insane coverage, it alone can carry you through plenty of fights. It's especially helpful against Skyla, probably the biggest hurdle for this run, thanks to its Steel-typing. But even besides Lucario, there are so many other good fighting types in Black 2 and White 2. Scrafty and Heracross are two especially notable picks, as they can help deal with a lot of the Elite Four, with Scrafty in particular taking a lot of burden off the Caitlyn fight. Speaking of the Elite Four, Champion Iris has three Pokémon weak to fighting, and besides her Archeops, nothing is that big of a threat to your team. As for Team Plasma, well, there isn't really much to say. Most Team Plasma members either run Dark types, Ice types, or Steel types, so fighting isn't going to have any problems with Team Plasma, or with the rest of the game to be honest. It's truly the best for Black 2 and White 2 as well. There's one type I want to give an honorable mention, and it's actually the type's first time on this list, Steel. While this does let us use Lucario again, it also means Riolu is the only thing we have for the first gym. Not terrible, but like I said earlier, Riolu isn't amazing off the bat. After Gym 1 though, a Steel run can get Magnemite, which makes Gym 2 a breeze, and from then on, Steel only gets better as you go with Pokémon like Excadrill, Agron, Ferrothorn, Skarmory, and Metagross of all things becoming available to you. So with a rough start, but a crazy good finish, Steel deserves mention for the back half of Generation 5. Next up is the Generation 6 games, X and Y. So at first I was really excited to take a look at these games, as they have an incredible variety of Pokémon available before the first gym. I was excited to find some niche typings that really excel, but as I kept looking, it quickly became apparent that one type just stomps this game, and it's kind of embarrassing. Yet again, the fighting type. After being the pick for both Gens 4 and 5, I really wanted something else to win, but X and Y almost wants you to use fighting types. Off the bat, you can keep Chespin, who is plenty to get you through the start of the game. The only other Pokémon you can pick up before Gym 1 is yet again, Riolu. However, I would skip it this time. More on that in a sec. Chespin can deal with the Bug Gym pretty easily, as it gets rollout at level 8. And then between Gyms 1 and 2, here's what's available for you to pick up. Pancham, Scraggy, Krogunk, a male Ralts, and oh, yeah, 
Paulucha, one of the game's premier speedrunning Pokemon. Oh, I'm sorry, are all these not enough for you? Here's what you can get throughout the rest of the game. Metacham, Mianxiao, Machamp, Hariyama, Sock, Throw, Heracross, Poliwrath, and Conkelder. Oh, are these still not enough for you? Here's a Mega Lucario after Gym 3. Have fun! In all seriousness, Halucha alone would be enough to warrant Fighting type getting the win here, but with Mega Lucario literally given to you and so early on, it's impossible for any other type to be better. And I haven't even mentioned Gym matchups yet. Not that there's really much to say, because outside of X and Y being really easy, the only ones that could give you trouble are the Fairy Gym, which, again, Mega Lucario, or the Psychic Gym, which you have more than enough options for. Also, nobody in the Elite Four will give you any trouble, and Halucha alone solos four members of Diantha's team. And if you have trouble with the rest, Mega Lucario. Okay, I think y'all get the point. Fighting type just stomps through Kalos. As for a runner-up, all this talk of Halucha should make it apparent that the Flying type is our other great option for X and Y. While you may have to chuck your starter, you do receive another, being the Charmander from Professor Sycamore. And it doesn't take long to get there, given that the only obstacle is a bug gym for a flying run. So not really an obstacle. And soon after this, history kind of repeats itself. You get Halucha again, making second gym leader Grant really easy, and from then on you're good. You do have to face both an electric and ice gym, but you have a lot of good options to help deal with them. Just to name a few... <gasps> Talonflame, Gliscor, Salamence, Gyarados, Skarmory, Yanmega, Crobat, Aerodactyl, Driftblim, yeah, I think you get the point. Flying is stacked as f too. But as great as it is, it's only second, as it's hard to stand up to... Mega Lucario. On to Generation 7, we have Sun and Moon. For this one, I'm also lumping in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, since they don't differ enough from the originals to really change my answer. The Alola games, similar to X and Y, have a ton of options available to the player, especially with the unique typings of the game's starters. And thankfully, we can keep one of those starters, because I believe the best type for this game is Water type. Poplio is a fantastic starter for Sun and Moon. Not only is it balanced all around in the early game, but it eventually gains the fairy typing, which helps it a ton defensively. But Poplio is far from the only reason to do a water type run in these games, because there are so many water types available to the player. You can get Slowpoke and Wingle directly south of your house, which helps you get through Mele Mele Island. And shortly after you arrive on the second island, you can start surfing on water, which opens up almost every other water type in the game. You can get Gyarados, Milotic, Araquanid, Wishcash, Toxapex, Golisopod, and several others that help round out your team, as well as give you options for your tougher fights. The Sun and Moon games can be pretty difficult, especially with their later installments, but Water's few weaknesses help a lot in some of the more challenging fights. You only really have to worry about the Grass Trial, which you have several options for by that point, and the Electric Trial, which a Pokemon like Wishcash can easily help overcome. It's not that Water is amazing at getting through Alola, but moreover it's a type that can get through with little opposition. That's more than I can say for a lot of types in Gen 7, as so many others end up struggling with an early game totem due to lack of options. With that said, there is a type that for the first time is actually usable on one of these runs. As a runner-up, we have the Ghost type. Alola games are fantastic for Ghost runs. Not only do you get to keep Rowlet due to Decidueye's typing, but the Haoli Cemetery is pretty early in the game, and you can capture Pokemon like Ghastly and Drifloon, and even Mischievous before the first totem. And with later options like Alolan Marowak, Delmize, Jellicent, Mimikyu, and Palosan, you can have a pretty well-rounded team by the mid-game. Plus, this is one of the few games where you can actually get a Gengar without trading. It's almost like they wanted you to use it. I think Ghost can definitely compete with the Water type for top spot, but I give Water the edge due to its overall better defenses in a game where you deal with some pretty big threats. But hey, if you love Ghost types like me, definitely go back and play an Alola game. Next up we have Generation 8, Sword and Shield. To be honest, this game is one of the main reasons that I split these videos into two parts. Because of the massive expanse that is the wild area, in addition to the first gym being pretty far into the game, Sword and Shield are the only games in the franchise to allow every single monotype run under this rule set. So I researched, and researched, to figure out the absolute best type for the game, and the conclusion I came to? Use whatever the hell you want. No, seriously. While certain types do better overall, because of the variety available to the player on the first couple routes, and more importantly, the wild area, every type can make it through the game. 
With the changing weather in the wild area, there's a lot available to you so long as you're willing to play with the RNG. This coupled with a reasonable level cap of 20 without any badges means you can get a diverse enough team early on that can help cover some of your weaknesses. Water type is the best example of this. Even with the first gym being grass type, the combination of your starter and the crazy amount of water types in the wild area means you'll have little trouble with Milo's gym. That's also partially because Milo kind of sucks. Afterwards, water has a pretty easy time getting through the rest of the game. So easy in fact that I think water is probably the best type for Sword and Shield, especially given its helpful matchups against Chairman Rose and Champion Leon at the end of the game. But like I said earlier, these are games where you can pretty much use anything. It's just too bad that the generation best for this is one of the least liked by the fanbase. Speaking of games the fanbase just loves, we're on to Generation 9, Scarlet and Violet. What are your thoughts on Scarlet and Violet at this point? Now that we've had them for a while, what would you rate them out of 10? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of rating, Scarlet and Violet get a high rating from me for the numerous options available for a monotype run. Just like in Gen 8, the first gym is a ways off, meaning there's a ton of Pokemon available to the player at the start, and thus, a lot of type options. Even with a level 15 cap before getting any badges, you're spoiled with choices. An important thing to note, Scarlet and Violet are set up where you face a specialist in every single type, whether it be a gym, titan, or team star leader. While some are more difficult than others, this helps balance out the game, meaning less types are hindered as a whole. Like its predecessor, it's one of the best generations for a monotype run to date. And because of this, there are three types I want to highlight for Generation 9. The first of which is the fire type, making its debut in these videos. There are some amazing fire types available throughout the game. With new additions like Scovillain and Armourouge slash Serulege, and classics like Arcanine, Talonflame, and Houndoom, you have so many great Pokemon at your disposal. But let's be honest, you don't need any of them, because Fuecoco and eventually Skeledurge breaks these games. Its signature move Torch Song is absolutely busted, especially given Skeledurge's naturally good defenses. This allows it to spam one move the entire fight and win. And with the previously mentioned Fire Pokemon as backup, it's a type that can easily get through Scarlet and Violet. The second type I want to mention is the Dark type. This one is more of a personal reason. I just recently restarted my Pokemon Violet file, with the main intent of quickly finishing the Pokedex to set the file up for competitive stuff down the line. And since I chose Fuecoco on my first playthrough, and I didn't want to stare at a shaking duck ass for several hours, I chose Sprigatito. And for most of the game, it was basically all I used. For a typing with 7 weaknesses, I was shocked at how easily I was able to get through a majority of the game. I guess there's a reason Meowskarada is a primary Pokemon for speedrunning certain segments of Scarlet and Violet. So after I beat the main story, I thought, man, imagine how easy the game would have been if I added, oh, I don't know, Haunchcrow, Houndoom, Mabostiff, Weavile, Crocodile, Grimmsnarl, and so on to my team. So yeah, high recommendations for the dark type from this guy. But as great as both the fire and dark types are, I think there's one type that does better. I'll give you a second to guess what type that is. Not that you should need it, because surprise surprise, it's the fighting type again. For one, this allows you to keep the water starter, Quaxly. And look, I know I shit on it earlier, but tail feathers aside, it's really good in these games. As you might have just realized, this makes all the starters usable on the best teams. And that's because the starters in this game are straight broken. Seriously, outside of maybe gens 4 or 7, this is the most stacked group of starters for an in-game playthrough ever. But it's more than just the Quaxly line itself that gives fighting type the edge in Scarlet and Violet. It's our old friend Halucha and his new best friend, Flamigo, that immediately takes center stage. Prime speedrunning Pokemon, these guys just blow through almost everything. Even more so than Skeledurge in some ways. And with other Pokemon like Palmot, Gallade, Annihilate, and Toxicroak, amongst several others, you won't have much trouble, even against bigger hurdles like the Psychic Gym or the Fairy Team Star Leader. So yeah, Scarlet and Violet have several good options, if not a majority of the types for monotype runs. I'm just glad that more types are becoming accessible for monotype runs, as they're such a fun way to go through the Pokemon games. I hope that these videos prompted some of you to try out a monotype run, or even gave you an idea for your next one. If so, or even if you just enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe down below. My dog and I would both appreciate it. I've got some exciting things in the works for this channel, including a surprise in June, so long as I can get it done. Speaking of which, I should keep working on that. So for now, as thanks for making it to the end of the video, here's a picture of my dog. Talk to y'all soon.